Welcome to another episode of the Hammer Down Sales and Productivity Podcast, where my mission is to help you achieve more success, more clients, a better mindset, and to create that killer mentality that will take you and your business to extraordinary levels. Welcome to another episode of the Hammer Down Sales and Productivity Podcast. My name is Wayne Weathersby, and welcome to another episode. Today's topic is building your brand and marketing prowess. Three approaches you can help um, develop your personal brand. First thing I'd like to cover is, uh, you know, you want to become a household name. Obviously, that's the goal of every business. You want to be top of mind whenever it comes to people, whether it's you're in the car business and real estate, whatever it is that you do, you want to be top of mind when people need your services. So the first thing is, is that you want to become a household name where everybody associates you with whatever that particular business is. Uh, one thing you don't want to do is you don't want to rely on a company name to further your reputation. You want to be the brand. You want to figure out what image you want to project, whether it's edgy, sleek, another quality that conveys who you are um, can be, you know, something funny, comedic, whatever. Uh, but be sure it's reflected in your logo and other communications when you send those out. You want to be transparent on social media. Be a person others can rely, you know, rely on for information and uh, they get to know you and trust you for that product. Your post should include a mix of business and personal content. And, you know, your business and personal accounts should, you know, be about 95% of your business comes through your personal page and your personal connections. Uh, tag your clients in posts so that you'll be seen in their feeds. Uh, that'll help spread the word about what, you know, uh, you do and it helps you be productive and not busy. Show what your uh, workday involves. Create posts showing walkthroughs, walkarounds, design tips, successful closings, but always with your client's permission. Remember that. You want to accept all your friend requests on Facebook, except for spam, of course. If you can reach 5,000 friends, um, go through your list and delete the ones that are least likely to do business with you, like other people that are in the same business as you are and what have you. Uh, that way you can make more room for people that um, will use your services at some point. And then another great idea is, is to sponsor community events. You know, but you know, before the pandemic, um, you know, it was a little easier because there was a lot of public events going on. But you want to make sure that you are in the public eye as much as possible. The second topic is going to be leveraging leads. Uh, you know, you want to pick a platform and stick with it. Start small. Pick one platform. Do one thing and do it well. Uh, you can buy ads. But if you're going to buy ads, buy them in like one or two zip codes. Don't buy them in the whole state because you won't be able to cover that territory. And don't expand your reach until you've made enough money to cover the cost of the advertising on the other platforms. Uh, you want to take advantage of what's free. Uh, even more important than having Facebook friends or LinkedIn connections is your engagement with people in your network. You know, you want to tell people happy birthday on Facebook or congratulate them on a promotion or a graduation. Um, you want to like comments on five people's posts every day on every social media platform. If you don't engage, they won't see what you post. So just so you know, always be active and engaging on other people's posts, and that'll help you be seen as well. And then provide relevant content. You know, boost your Facebook and Instagram post. That way more people see it, you know, whether it's listing videos or you, if you have a podcast, a video blog about the market or anything along that lines. For a small fee uh, paid to the platform, typically anywhere from 100 uh, you know, from, from 100 to 1,000 impressions will cost you about 10 bucks. And uh, Instagram is about the same. $7 will get you about 1,000 impressions on Instagram. And you'll get yourself in front of an audience that can help define, you know, what your market is. Hyper tagging is, is essential. Uh, you can be sure the post will only be um, the audience you choose. So if you're a realtor, you want to make sure that you're tagging people that are not realtors. Um, because other realtors seeing your post is not going to be helpful to you at all. And uh, you want to create a Google business page. This ensures that you will pop up prominently in Google searches and your reviews will be seen there. People look at reviews. Um, 
you know, I have about 1160 reviews. If you do your job uh, and you do it well, you'll get good reviews and people will really determine whether or not they do business with you uh, based off of those reviews. So it's super important. Uh, I would definitely do that today is start a, a, a Google business page for sure. Instagram stories is an interesting topic as well. Uh, don't overthink it. The point is, is to show what you're doing throughout the day or what you're doing for a living, something that engages uh, your client in um, what your daily activities are, right? You, you want to post a mix of business and personal situations. People like people that are like them. And if you can show some humility or some humor or some fun uh, or bring some value in a value exchange of some sort that interests people, they will engage. You want to shoot vertically so that way that people don't have to turn their phones to watch it. If they have to put too much effort into it, obviously they're not going to be interested in watching too long. And always find a way to inject humor. People like to laugh, especially now with what's going on with the pandemic and all of the political stuff going on out there. Obviously, you want to bring some humor to the situation no matter what it, what it, what it is. Vary your camera view too. Sometimes you should talk into the camera and other times you should point the camera at your intended focal point. Keep it interesting. It, it makes people stay engaged when there are multiple things to look at. So maybe bounce back and forth between yourself and your subject. And don't cut people off speaking in mid-sentence and be sure that the audience can see your full face or the full face of whoever it is that you're participating with. You know, uh, it's really interesting that social media is a, a great platform to, to be omnipresent. You can be everywhere all the time. The key to it is, is you want to make sure that you're bringing some value. People are only going to watch you so long if you're lobbying for business. But if you can find a way to make it interesting and make it engaging, people will seek it out. I've had Instagram posts that have had up to 600 interactions. And a lot of it has to do with asking people questions, asking them what they think of a particular situation or take a picture of something interesting and ask them if people like it or if they don't like it or if they would do something different or something along that lines. I also post a lot of polls on my social media and those can be used in a good and a bad way. But a lot of times it's trying to help other businesses out. So you can reach out to your sphere and find somebody in another business and then go out and try to help that person build their business which then builds an ally in yourself. I'll give you an example. I actually reached out to a person uh, in my sphere that owns a restaurant and I let them know that, hey, I am gonna, I'm gonna reach out to my sphere and I'm just wondering if I can funnel people your way, if you can use some more business. And of course they always said yes. And I started going through my sphere and I just started going, hey, I need your help. Uh, I've got a client that's just moved into town um, we sold them a house here. They're starting to work here and they were asking us about great places to eat. And I started going through my sphere and asking people, Hey, where do you guys frequent the most when you go out to dinner? And they would tell me, and then I'd ask them, you know, what do you eat when you go there? How often do you go there? And would you refer, uh, you know, a family or a friend to that particular restaurant if you had the opportunity? And it gets me a chance to have a conversation that's not about what I do for a living, but I do inject that, hey, I sold them a house. Here's what we're doing. We're looking for places and things for them to do. Would you have any recommendations? And instead of having them having to think about it, I'm asking direct questions, right? So we do that. Um, I, I coach uh, car people and I have salesmen that while they're putting gas in cars, I'll have pe them ask, hey, it's, if you have a second, I notice you're driving a Ford product. I work for the Chrysler dealership down the road. Just wondering, be interested to find out why you purchased that particular vehicle and how long you've had it. And if you had to do it all over again, would you buy that product again or would you consider something different? And it just creates opportunities and it's like fishing with a cast net. You're throwing it out there and if you're going to have 5, 10, 15 conversations a day with people, um, you're going to have success. It's almost impossible not to have success.